In this video I'll uh, go on uh, about the clear path uh, motors uh, configuration for the MC. Um, I stopped in the last video about the direction for the sensor. That's uh, uh, you need to do that for the 60OF when you have uh, arranged, for example, symmetrical the motors outside it. Then you have to put symmetrically the sensors. But these sensors you cannot reverse their signal, so they have to measure in half of them uh, uh, clockwise and uh, the other half one counterclockwise. So I name them here positive, if you can see it there. So positive, for example, it's the clockwise. It, uh, uh, let me go back to that. Let's see why it doesn't go there. Okay, so I click one side to so activate this. So you can see you can have it a, a positive direction clockwise, for example, for one, three, and five motors. And then that means that the sensors measures as normal. And the rest, uh, they measure counterclockwise for two, four, six. So the signal gets inverted in the AMC, not in the sensor. The sensor gives the same signal for all. Uh, uh, like normal. So by inverting those, for example, right now position uh, 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 the motor one is still positive, like uh, in the direct mode for all the ones. So if I put it negative, you'll see that the motor goes goes out. So then put it back to positive, so it will find its center. It will stop. I attach this so I have some kind of uh, load there to show you, but still sensing uh, the position from the from here. Um, so just to put it back to this. So okay. So another thing uh, is the minimum motor speed. Uh, for the clear path motors, they have internal position system, so you can see if you try to move it, it will go itself back to the correct position. And that is even before it gets the signal into that, because they try to maintain speed, uh, like if it's in target speed. Let me click that window off there, so you get what I mean. So this is in target speed, if I move it, it goes off speed. So it goes to correct the speed to be zero so if you put uh, the minimum speed to one um, for the clear path motors the sensor will try to correct the position more than the speed itself so what happened for example if I move it a little bit you may see it try to correct itself gets out of so you may see a little movement they're trying to correct but that's because of the backlash of the sensor because you can see that it's not moving and then when it moves a little bit it's already too far so that's the backlash effect from the gearbox or from other mechanical issues so to eliminate that just uh, increase the minimum speed to three or four and until it stops moving you can experiment a little bit. It will still stop when it's zero speed. Okay. So I'll just leave it at four. Uh, now the other thing, um, I've there's, there's a little bug for, with Fabian software. So to overpass that, just make sure you have it on kill signals. The KLM button, that's the button there. If you use that to kill the motor signal, just set it to this mode, not in the one at the whole position. That will be fixed soon. Okay. So, oh, it makes sure that 
the clear on the clear path motor there's two settings actually on the clear path motor setting and the clear path parameters uh, and the clear path motor oh. let me go back there I guess when I click it I have to fix it okay so you can say for CLP disable that's uh, when it has the high speed pulse switch modulation for the uh, HBT uh, DC motors but for clear path motors you need uh, lower pulse switch modulation so this mod 2 sets that so it can communicate properly with the signals and uh, also in the configuration on the advanced input AB filtering you should change that from the default to uh, 1 and 20 that's the filtering for the inputs of the uh, clear path motor which by the way there's a little USB connector on the back of the motor that you can use for this configuration program okay another thing let me leave it there so you don't have to worry about these parameters, you can be, numbers can be just once, just ignore that, when it's on uh, number 2 it's ignoring that menu. So another thing, let me see, um, the motor speed, there's two motor speeds actually, like I said, once the online, when it's connected to the software, it gets command from the computer, and the other one that's manually, you can do it from here, or uh, from Fabian software when it's not actually getting uh, positions from the game. So I'm gonna leave it online 50%, but uh, the offline right now I have 25%. As you can see that the speed of that. It's about 400 RPM because um, no less than that, uh, like 100 RPM because I have 800 there. So it's a quarter. So let me change that to 50%, just to show that it can go much higher without losing position sensing. So right now it's on 400 RPM. My steering wheel is off balance, but you can see it there. Uh, can even go let's go more than that 70 percent okay so let's go uh, 100 percent I'm afraid wow okay I think bus voltage <laughs> okay so it's in shutdown mode <laughs> so don't have to worry about that much if it happens something like that it's easy just go back to um, normal speed uh, I'll give it 50% and then you just uh, close it so it goes back to disable and then enable it again and it's good as new you can see actually here the max rpm went a little higher but came back and i think it went up to 87 percent when it sat down okay so um so when you increase the speed you may see it will it will want to go off don't stop in position or stop earlier so to fix that let's go back to p you can increase it a little bit until you find the correct setting if i put too much down for example there takes forever to settle so 
So let me put it back to 25. Two. I'll leave it about 27, I think it's good middle solution. So, um, one uh, other thing is, after you're uh, done using the LCD menu, uh, you can just click here to turn it off, it's the first switch. So, what that does is, it doesn't update anything, but it's much better in positioning the motor. Alright, I'll just turn it on again. So, um, I'm not sure if there's anything else. Ah, the start position. That's the start position of the motor when you want to start it. So, you can actually tell you, okay, go to start to. 30% Okay Let's leave the 50% there <coughs> Then it's the stepping How much step you want uh, Leave that always to 100% as possible And then the time out uh, How long it will wait When it's already in online mode like getting data from the game to when you close the game and you don't want to play anymore it parks the motors automatically so that's about 5 seconds delay there but you can set it more up to... I don't know there's lots of delay that you can set it to the minimum is um, 2.5 seconds just leave it about 5 seconds Okay. All right. So another thing is, if you want to have the motor accelerate smoothly, I right now I have the acceleration to almost 2,000 RPM. If I wanted to accelerate smoothly to the target position I get for the phone game, for example, I can put it less. Like I'll just put it 400. So what that will do is. Uh, for example, when I get to position, you'll see that it will take more time to go there. But it will also uh, be more uh, smooth. So you don't really want that. For example, now it's passing back and forth. So it's better to change this to the best uh, resolution, like 2000 RPM. Okay, let's do that. That's the maximum RPM for acceleration. Now uh, you'll see what's the difference. See how fast it stops the position. Okay. I think you can even put it higher if you want, but as long as the motor can uh, accept the values, let's put about 3000 RPM just to see what happens. Actually, it does accelerate to 300 RPM. Alright, 3000 RPM acceleration. I don't dare to touch this when it does it. <laughs> Alright, so remember when you send this, oh, I exceeded the RMS. So remember that keep the maximum acceleration high 3000, 2000, and then the max speed you want to get. And uh, remember to have the yeah, maximum acceleration higher than the actual speed. And, uh, that will do it. Then after you set the, those two values, you can go back and uh, 
set the PID the way you like it. For example, you can set the PID lower. It will still be good. So it takes one turn there. Go set 30. Okay. Now this wires are really sensitive, I have for the sensor, they're not shielded, so I touch them, they make noise. So, um, I think I covered everything, don't forget the minimal motor speed, that's what happens, okay, four or, four or six, whatever, that's good enough. So that's about it. And, uh, don't forget to always have a safety switch installed on the enable line of the motors. So in case you want to, to cut the power, stop the motor. Don't cut the power from the power supply. Uh, use the enable to kill it. For example, I can show you an example. Let's say going crazy and I want to stop it, you press it, it's done. It's all loose now. Actually it has some resistance, but it's not completely loose, but it will stop whatever it's doing. And that's enabled there. You can see. Alright, it's enabled. I hope uh, that explains lots of things about uh, how this works because they're really complicated, they look complicated. Oh, the, the auto rust, don't forget this one too. Uh, it should be on low, if you put it high it will, it will, it will be really unstable. Let's see on high how it is. Um, did I select it? It doesn't stay that high, so don't forget this to be in auto low always. It's no. Yep, check. Alright, I hope uh, this video helps everyone to understand better this delicate servo motors, which uh, are often misunderstood. Alright, thanks.